guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing really, really well. And this is your AFC Asian Cup review for today's action. And we're also going to look forward to tomorrow's action where we just got two games, but we're already one third of the group stage will be completed by tomorrow evening. So, anyway, uh, before we get into the matches, though, I mean, the match reviews, though, please do like and share the video. If you like the video in general, please subscribe. Leave me your opinions in the comments. Leave me your prediction for tomorrow's game where we got Thailand playing. Kyrgyzstan and Saudi Arabia playing Oman. So anyway, starting off, we had South Korea taking on Bahrain. And I was actually excited for this game. I thought this one was going to be a really, really good game. And I thought it was in the first half. Look, South Korea were bang average in that first half. I thought uh, they had a lot of chances. But the way they were moving the ball about, it was very, very slow. It was very lethargic. But they still created a two or three very good chances. Uh, there was uh, Ji, Ji Sung. The striker, I think he should have scored. Uh, there was one other one I can't remember there. I, mean, I can't remember exactly, but they, that was another good chance. And then the third one, which was a goal. I thought it was a great, great taken goal by Huang. Uh, ball comes in from the left. Uh, Huang with a lovely chip. And it's 1-0 to South Korea. And Bahrain also had one chance at the counter sack, which I thought was a very good chance. They should have done better with that one. Uh, there was one set-piece chance. Uh, but otherwise, I thought Bahrain at times, look... This is the issue I had with Bahrain. Defensively, they were going to struggle. And they did. They did in this game. They struggled a lot defensively. They lost. They had a lot of concentration lapses at times. And they just let South Korea have all the space in the world at times. But at times, I thought they were very well organized. And they had a good shape. Uh, but overall, in the second half, though, this is where South Korea started to get take the game away. Uh, Bahrain actually getting an equalizer first of all. It's a massive equalizer for them. Turns the game on, but after that, Lee Kang In decides to take the game in his own hands. First one is an absolute beauty outside of the box. Bosch and in, and just like that, it's 2 1 to South Korea. And then it's late on, 3 1 to South Korea. This time, Kang In leave with really, really quick decision making. PSG got a real, real start in him, and it's very well nice, nicely finished. Uh, I thought South Korea were be slightly better in the second half. I'm still not convinced really by South Korea. I thought the way they were moving the ball about was slow. I thought somehow Jürgen Klinsmann made Son look completely useless, which was quite an achievement. But I think South Korea won't complain for now. They've won the game. Uh, I thought there were some good performances. I thought uh, Huang in midfield was good. I thought, of course, Kim Min Jae at the back. Uh, the goalkeeper as well, I thought he made some good saves. I thought, yeah. And overall, I thought South Korea got the job done. Bahrain, look. They weren't bad, they weren't that good. I think at times they had a good shape by them, they had good defensive organisation. At times they looked awful defensively, but they had some opportunities on the counter and they couldn't quite take advantage and get anything out of the game, which is a real, real shame. I think Bahrain will feel like they could have got something out of this game because South Korea, I don't think, were that great. It was just three absolute quality moments from them to really win the game. So I don't think Bahrain will be too disappointed. Next, I think they got Malaysia, if I'm not wrong, now. Next, yeah, let me get the Bahrain's fixture list off. Yeah, Bahrain got Malaysia next, uh, who looked awful. And the South Korea played Jordan, who I think are going to be the toughest opponent in this group for South Korea at the moment. So, South Korea away. Bahrain will be disappointed, but I don't think they'll be too upset about this, personally. Uh, it's probably the hardest game out of the group, uh, out of the way. Uh, second game we had was Iraq taking on Indonesia and... I thought this was a great game, to be honest. Uh, uh, both teams played in a really, really high tempo. And I thought Iraq were the better team. I thought Iraq were stringing passes really, really well. They were keeping the ball really, really nicely. And for the first 25 minutes, I don't think Indonesia really laid the glove on them. There was one chance from a long throw-in, which uh, somehow hit the post. But otherwise, I thought in that first 25 minutes, Iraq were completely all over them. And the first goal is a comedy of errors. It's really, really unlucky. From Indonesia, a couple of deflections, and it goes straight into the path of the, the uh, Iraq attacker Muhammad. Um, uh, let me get this goal scorer's name up. Uh, Muhammad Ali, he puts it in from a great strike from him. 1 0 to Iraq, and I thought, here we go again. Iraq, I think, got this. Uh, after that, though, Indonesia really, really started to put the pressure on. I thought Indonesia played really, really well. They were stringing a lot of passes together after. The 25 minute mark and he felt like something was happening and they get a goal. It's a lovely bill play on the right. Shoot. Keep I think the doesn't help his case. And it's very well finished off 
by Marcelino, <coughs> who I thought had a very good game for Indonesia. He was very energetic. I thought he was all over the place. And Indonesia get the game back on level terms. And I thought Indonesia are in this now. And they had some very good situations which they could have maybe done better with. The final pass wasn't quite there for Indonesia. And then on the stroke of half time, uh, Iraq take the goal. And this, I think, was a massive goal. I think changed the whole dynamics of the game. I don't care if Indonesia go into half time 1 1, I think they'll be a much, much happier side. Uh, but uh, there was apparently a. Iraqi player goes down, he was on the floor but the player carries on, left and side, ball uh, is shot at the keeper, keeper parries it and he's really really lucky, goes into an Iraqi player and it is 2-1 on the stroke of half time. I thought uh, Iraq based on the balance of play was slightly deserved of the lead but I thought Indonesia would probably feel that they were done, they got done by really, really harshly. Uh, in the second half though I thought Indonesia had some very good situation, they could have done a lot more with it. I thought the final pass, the final shot, um, they felt patchy and they felt like they were under pressure. But I thought they did some things really, really well. They put Iraq under a little bit of pressure. Pressure. I thought they pressed really well. I thought they had a good defensive structure about them. And Iraq, of course, they had a goal early in the second half ruled out for offside. And rightly so. But I thought in the second half, we saw a much, much better version of Indonesia personally. But the third goal absolutely killed them off. It was actually a really, really good finish from Ayman Hussein. It's a great chest down and bang into the roof of the net. 3-1 and that's the game and Iraq take all three points. For Indonesia, their next game against Vietnam, I think that's going to be paramount if they got a chance of qualifying. Iraq, I think, are almost there but they're going to play Japan next. Let's see what they can do there. And we move to the final game. We had Malaysia taking on Jordan and it ends 4-0. To Jordan and honestly I did not see the scoreline coming. I thought Malaysia would have much more bad them. I thought there were some very good attackers. Arif Almi, Arif, uh, uh and none of those guys really got involved and I thought Jordan did their job extremely well. Jordan kept things really really simple. They kept the ball and then they pounced because that back three that Malaysia played was all over the place. There was literally no field at times. The amount of space that Jordan players had was absolutely ridiculous to be honest. The coach has to take some of the blame for this because the, the amount of space that Jordanian players was getting was ridiculous. Uh, anyway, the first goal comes from the left wing. It's a shot from the left wing. It's a great strike uh, to give Jordan the lead. Uh, minutes later, looking like the play was going on. It was offside, but no, it was not offside. And then there's a foul in the box. We are just used very, very well. And the penalty is given and it's 2-0 inside 14 odd minutes. The game was dead and buried there. Malaysia were never going to be able to wake up. And Jordan make it 3-0 which was another another one which was offside wise very close. But again the guy on the right had so much space. He gets the ball, runs at the defender and he squares it and it's 3-0. Game is dead and buried at that point. At 2-0 I thought the game was dead and buried. At 3-0 I knew it was buried because Malaysia just did not look like scoring in the whole match to me. They... There was one half chance where there, there was somebody on the right, I can't remember his name. He got the ball and he shot and I think the Jordanian keeper had to make a good save. But that was about it. Malaysia got done physically, they got done tactically, they got done mentally, they got done every single thing I could think of. They got done. They were not good enough. Uh, in this game, I thought Malaysia, they just could not match what Jordan had to offer in this game. Jordan were physical. Jordan just used the experience. They were wise. They kept the ball. Uh, when it was necessary, waiting for their moments, took their chances. Uh, if I look at the so Jordan had eight shots on goal on target, and they scored four, so 50% conversion rate. And I think it could have been more, to be honest. There was they hit the post late on. There was a one on one. But I thought Jordan were very very professional in their work. Uh, second half, Malaysia tried to change some things around, but I don't think it really made a difference personally. And in the second half, uh, Malaysia huffed, puffed. A bit more possession, but that was about it. They couldn't really do anything really with it. It was all Jordan pretty much with the chance creation. And I thought Jordan looked like scoring more than Malaysia scoring a goal in this game. Uh, there was a fourth goal at the end. It was a lovely, lovely pass from Jordanian player. But I don't know how. With one pass, the whole Malaysian defense is getting wiped out completely. It was the ball. The Jordanian player has a lot of time. He just plays the ball forwards. Nobody's there to do anything. It's in. 4-0 game. It was dead and it's buried. And Malaysia 
harsh lesson for them. This is going to be a harsh one for them. 4-0 in the first game. Probably. Now they've got nothing to play for. Let's see what they can do against Bahrain. Jordan, though, I can't lie, looked much, much better than what I, what I thought they would. So, fair, fair play to them. I still don't think there's much to be excited about, like, in terms of Dark Horse. Personally, I don't see it. Because Malaysia, we knew Malaysia couldn't defend before the game. And this problem just came out uh, even more significant than what we call. In, it just flashed even more. And I thought Malaysia just played into Jordan's hand, personally. So... Look, I'm going to credit Jordan. I thought they were very, very good for their four goals. They kept things simple. They scored some lovely goals. But I thought it was professional. And I thought Malaysia was just very, very naive. Uh, anyway, now we move to tomorrow's action. So this is the final group uh, that's going to be opening tomorrow. So we had group A. Uh, so we had final group, uh, which is going to be group F. Uh, now, based on today's action, Jordan go first. South Korea they go second. Bahrain and Malaysia now in the uh, outside of the top two. Um, Indonesia bottom of the group. Uh, Vietnam in third. Iraq and Japan topping the gain the top two spots. But now we move to Group F as we got Saudi Arabia taking on Oman. Oh boy! Um, actually, I want to talk about first of all. I'll talk about the order. So Thailand play Kyrgyzstan. Sorry, sorry. And this one. I think Kyrgyzstan have, must feel like they got a good chance here. Kyrgyzstan, I don't think I'm fancied by that many people. I said they'll do okay in the World Cup qualifiers. They don't, so I think, winning against Oman. But against Thailand, they got a great chance. Now, Thailand are all over the place. So, they actually just met up five days before the Asia Cup. Uh, Ishii, the new coach, he's been appointed newly. Their best player apparently thinks it's more important to join a pre-season tour for Japanese club than playing for his national team. Thailand football is in pure chaos. And Kyrgyzstan, I think, they, they have to go for it tomorrow. Kyrgyzstan must smell blood tomorrow. And they try and beat this Thailand side. Uh, Kyrgyzstan, though, I don't think they're that great away from home. So I think that could be a disadvantage playing on a neutral venue personally for them. But if they can't beat this Thailand team, I don't know what they're going to do, man. Uh, Thailand, though, God knows what's, what's going to happen with them. They lost 6-0 to Japan in a friendly... They've got some good players in attack, but physicality-wise, I don't think they're there. I think they're still very naive as a tech team. Tactically, they leave a lot of space. I think this could be easy, easily another Malaysia, can't lie. And <coughs> Thailand could get ripped apart if things do get bad. Now, surely it's the Asia Cup. I expect some sort of fight from Thailand. Because I don't think Thailand and Kyrgyzstan are that part of, they're that different. I think they're, they're quite close in terms of ability, personally. Uh, tomorrow, I do think Thailand going to dominate more the ball, but I think Kyrgyzstan are going to have their moments. I think they're going to look to score some goals. I think uh, I think it's going to be a good game, and I am going with a one all draw here for this one. I think Kyrgyzstan, I don't trust them outside of their home ground. They lost to this Malaysia team, which, to be honest, away to Malaysia is actually quite tough. But Kyrgyzstan are not that they're not that sort of team that do well away from home, personally. Uh, Thailand though, all over the place. Uh, do I sit on the fence? Do I give Kyrgyzstan the win? I'm, I'm not sure. Because I definitely do not see Thailand winning tomorrow. I'll be shocked if Thailand do win, personally. Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna go... I'm going with a 1-1 one, one draw here. I'm going Thailand 1, Kyrgyzstan 1. I don't think Kyrgyzstan are gonna have enough tomorrow to win the game. But I don't think they're gonna lose the game tomorrow. Thailand, I think, will be very happy uh, to get their campaign away with, with something. Personally, I think for both nations, they need to win this game tomorrow. They have to win this game to really have a chance of making out of this group. Uh, moving to the other game. Saudi Arabia take on Oman. Saudi Arabia are in full-fledged crisis. Roberto Mancini, this could go wrong. Uh, so apparently Saudi Arabia are going to drop their starting number one. Because apparently, he didn't want to play friendly. So, God's sake, what's, what's actually going on? So, Saudi Arabia... In all sorts of chaos. There's a couple of players who were injured and everything. The, the, the Saudi camp is in a, in a whole mess. And I think tomorrow, Oman, just like I said with Kyrgyzstan, must feel like they got a chance against Saudi. And I think Oman, I saw them in the World Cup qualifiers, they were horrible. I saw them in the recent friendlies, improvement. I think it was a much, much bigger improvement. So, I don't know which Oman's going to turn up tomorrow, to be honest. I but... Oman should fancy their chances. I think Oman 
the solid unit that will play in the in a solid shape. I think they're going to make things very, very hard for Saudi. And I think if Saudi don't score early, this could get ugly. I won't lie. But Saudi Arabia should be fancying themselves here. Come on, it's own man. You're the top five. You're the powerhouse of Asia. You should be winning tomorrow. I know there's chaos. There's all sorts of stuff going on. But come on. Come on. Saudi are favourites. In my opinion, tomorrow, I think Saudi are going to have more of the ball. I think they're going to look to dominate more the possession i think they're going to be the team that's going to create more chances but i'm not going to give them a massive win here i'm just going to give them a one nil win in fact here i think oman are going to make them tight i think oman are going to make them difficult and themselves to be difficult to be personally in my opinion and i think saudi arabia they they haven't picked some big players i think for this asian cups i think they still will have enough to beat oman but i think it's just going to be narrow it's going to be one nil personally and I wouldn't even be shocked if a man actually get a draw or something out of this game. And I think that's pretty much this group explained. This group is a proper group of life. Uh, Thailand have a chance. Kyrgyzstan have a chance. Oman have a chance. Saudi have a chance. Simple as that. I think all four should be heading into the in, into this group stage campaign with full of confidence personally. Uh, but Saudi, I think tomorrow they have to win. I think they'll win just about 1-0. Oman though, let's see what they can do. If they're really surprised if they can hold it together if they can show what improvements they made from the World Cup qualifiers and if that's going to be enough and I think for Saudi it's all about the result tomorrow they have to win to just calm everything down to calm everything down because a win will always help to calm things down and in the camp and probably feels a good atmosphere and gives Roberto Mancini some very important breathing space and I'm going with the 1-0 and uh, for Saudi Arabia man I gone 1-1 for Thailand versus Kyrgyzstan. If you like the video though, please do like and share the video. If you like the video in general, please subscribe. Leave me your opinions in the comments about the games today that I have discussed. Leave me your prediction for tomorrow's games. If you like the video though, please do like and share the video. If you like the video in general, please subscribe to the channel as well. And we'll be back with later on with the AFCON review as well where we had Cameroon. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about them later on in the video. So I hope to see you guys later on that one as well.